Okay, so there is this father who sparked a lot of talk over the use of medical marijuana. Of course, you know, it's Father's Day right now. His name is Mark Wolf. He's a father of three and a card-carrying medical cannabis patient. He wrote an op-ed piece in the New York Times hailing the benefits of marijuana to treat his pain. His piece elicited heavy criticism from several people, including Jennifer Grellman. Both Mark and Jennifer are joining us from San Francisco to talk about this, and you, they're sitting next to each other peacefully. So maybe that's because <laughs> there's not alcohol involved. Yes, also here to add her thoughts on the topic is Dr. Devi, who is in New York. So welcome to everyone. So Mark, why Thank did you. you write? Why do you think it makes you a better parent? Look, it, let's be clear. I don't, I don't think it necessarily makes me a better parent. Uh, and for the record, I actually do not get high around my kids as a matter of practice at all. What I was trying to accomplish with that piece in the New York Times was, was to relate uh, with some humor, which, I hope, which hopefully came across to people, the experience I had of what happened when I would come home and whereas I used to have a cocktail upon coming home and kind of check out and s withdraw from my children, after I received this prescription uh, for my back, I found myself suddenly much more present uh, and enjoying the company of my children far more than I did when I was drinking. And that triggered a whole bunch of thoughts in me. For example, uh, what is alcohol doing to families? What about the people that come home and, and drink wine in front of their children? and thereby are sending, I think, a very strong message to their kids that alcohol is okay, because mommy and daddy do it, uh, while those same people are then judging or criticizing other parents who happen to be choosing cannabis or are taking it with a, a doctor's prescription. And I'm just thinking that there's a big disconnect here because obviously alcohol, I think hopefully we can all agree, is far more toxic, far more addictive, far more likely to generate violence, child abuse, family dysfunction than cannabis. Let so me my question is mark. why is cannabis being singled out? <laughs> Uh, Jennifer, you yeah, jump in, you, jump in. You don't, Jennifer, you don't seem to agree with that. Well, uh, frankly, parents that use marijuana have a much strongly likelihood of having children that use marijuana at an earlier age. And this is because of genetic predisposition as well as um, problems with the um, dependence and using marijuana in general and what happens with children watching their parents model the behavior. Now, this might not be a problem, but what is going on with the adolescent brain when a child is using marijuana? Well, frankly, the brain is, it's much more dangerous for an adolescent to use marijuana than for an adult. So let's think about those kids for a minute and the neurological damage that actually goes on in the brain, which means Can't the changes same be said function. about alcohol? Um, certainly it can, but I, I felt very strongly about responding to the cannabis point, and I think it's right. important not to segue away from it, because right. also we're seeing drops in IQ from marijuana and changes in the hippocampus in those fibers, the density of the fibers that connect with the hippocampus, a 90% drop, that's huge. So I guess my point is whether it's alcohol, whether it's marijuana, parents play a very important role. We work very hard in a nonprofit being adept to educate parents and kids okay. right. about the oh. dangers of using. You, Dr. Devi, you hear you heard what both of us you said it's a drop in IQ. He says he's he's far more present. And the argument that she's making about I'm just and I'm playing devil's advocate here, the argument she is making about marijuana, can't the same argument be made about alcohol if you are if you have a parent who uses alcohol, chances are you will use alcohol as a child. It's the same argument. Well, that might be true, but I think we're talking about two separate issues. So we're really talking about medical marijuana, whether it's safe or effective for people's health. That's a different issue than the legalization of marijuana for recreational use or social use, which it sounds like that's more what uh, Mr. Wolf is using it for. So some people look at if we approve uh, marijuana for medical use, that we're actually getting a victory on the path towards legalization. Now, I personally am in favor of decriminalization of marijuana. I think the penalties are too harsh, but I think that's very different than saying that you're going to prescribe it at a specific dose or frequency or time period for people who have pain or other issues. I have to say, it's, uh, sitting here on television having this argument, it, it's like, quite honestly, we don't even pitch stories about marijuana anymore. It feels like same-sex marriage. It feels like yeah. you're having this argument in 1958 quite honestly. It, the, the train has left the station when it comes to this, um, and it feels like a lot of the arguments that people use about marijuana are the same arguments that were used about alcohol, and, and it, just, it just feels really old. Am I wrong with that in my assessment of this? 
Well, like I said, I'm in favor of decriminalization, but I do think that it's different than this issue. So if we look at... But uh, it, it, so if you have if you have something that is not regulated and yeah. there aren't enough studies, to, then how can you make that judgment then? Well, that's the thing. So I actually think that we should do the studies. I mean, we should look at the states where it's already legal and maybe look at the patients who are taking it and maybe have a registry or a database and really conduct those studies to see who it actually helps. Because the effect on people who have cancer-related pain, for example, yeah. may be very different than the majority yeah. of people who have low back pain or yeah. headache. And listen, I, I think that I think that you know, Mark, you bring up a very good point. No one is saying that you that you should be using alcohol or or using marijuana around your kids. But I also hear mothers and a lot of people saying, "Oh my gosh, I have the kids today. This is going to be a three glass of wine, you know, day." And I think that is just as harmful and just as wrong as Mark using if he were to use marijuana around his kids. Can I, I, I make a comment on this one? Yeah, that, yeah. Are you want to turn to Mark? No, it's a well, good one. Well, I, I think that, yeah, the, the power of parents and their modeling, I think you're absolutely right. Whether you're modeling, you know, stress control through having a drink, through any substances, that's in turn what your kid's going to pick up on. So right. when we really try to tell kids, get involved in something you love to do, meditate, yoga, exercise, all of these things to make us healthier, if a parent is modeling using any substance, it's going to affect that child and how early their use begins and, and how they use it yeah. for stress control. And, and unfortunately, I couldn't agree more, so I don't know where the controversy is, but uh, I will <laughs> right. say that I think that do I, we're going to lose you guys because we're running out of satellite time. That's what I'm being okay. told. So I would love to talk more, but you know what? We have to do it. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. And thank, All right, you, thank you. Thank you so All much. All right. To be continued.